from season three onwards. Season three, season four, just one operator each, and then year six is going to be the exact same thing. That's, yeah, that's less content. Um, I was streaming recently and someone asked me what I thought about Ubisoft's monetization policy, and the only thing I could sort of say is, as a trend that I've been seeing, is less content and more monetization. That's That's what we're seeing with Rainbow Six. There's more and more ways for Ubisoft to make money, and less and less actual actual expansion of the game. What do I think about Ubisoft's overall monetization problem? Uh, I've we, we used to talk about this on the podcast, and I've mentioned this before. In general, I used to think that Siege was one of the games that got it right. Like, you can play all of the content in this game, and there has been so much content. There's been so many operators added, maps added, different gadgets added, uh, new weapons with all the operators, and also, they've been fixing the game a lot. The game has just improved so much along the way, and they're still making technical improvements. So, there's a lot of work that has gone into making Rainbow Six what it is today, and... I think it's perfectly fair that that deserves to be monetized in a way. You can't make all those changes and updates without without somehow paying the employees to do so. And I used to 100% believe that the way they did it, whereas um, all of the all of the cosmetics were were um, were voluntary. Like if you wanted to, you can buy them. You don't have to spend anything. I thought that was that was good. Now, what you can't deny, though, 100% undeniable, is that is that they've also changed the way they work in that there is less and less content being released and there is more and more monetization in the game. Right, they're making more and more cosmetics, there's the Pro League cosmetics, there's the, the Team Skin cosmetics, which they share 30% with, um, with the teams themselves. But it's still, like, that That still means that 70% goes to Ubisoft, right? So, there is, yeah, like I said, like, the point I'm making is there's more and more monetization and there's less and less content. We're not really getting new maps anymore. Rumors are that uh, next season we're going to have only six new operators instead of eight. So, there's that. Yeah, there's the there's there's no new guns. There's been no new guns all year. They keep changing that, and yeah, it's just it is quite simply. Oops, that's ours. Um, less content and more monetization, and I think there comes a, a time when that becomes problematic. Okay, he's up, all right, and less on new content. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I'm kind of fifty-fifty on that. Um, House is a completely new, new map, yeah, and I said that sort of in the stream yesterday as well, someone asked me what I thought, or was it maybe the other stream uh, the week before, someone asked me what I thought about map reworks in general, and I mentioned the exact same thing there, like, to me these map reworks, they are usually so extensive, like if you look at Canal, Canal is a new map essentially, it's, it's a massively new map, um, a lot of the maps that have been reworked, essentially what we're doing is we're losing an old map and hopefully replacing it with a better one. Sometimes it keeps sort of the same theme, and sometimes it looks just completely new. So at the end of the day, um, are we are we really not getting new maps? Maybe we are. Maybe we are getting new maps. They're just basically replacing older maps. And I think probably uh, an issue there that, that wasn't addressed, that wasn't mentioned in this presentation, was that it's, it's essentially down to uh, data limitations, right? The game can't become infinitely large. Um, the game is already pretty huge in terms of the space it takes up on your hard drive. Um, I think certainly on PC, for most people that's not an issue, but then once you go to console there is a hard limit. You can't make the game infinitely large. So that's why we're seeing uh, this, this new trend of essentially removing an old map and adding in a new one. Um, yeah, maybe that's not a bad thing. Maybe that's maybe it doesn't matter because why do you need to bloat the game with a bunch of maps that maybe aren't that good, that maybe don't quite work, if you can just improve them, make them better, and have a new roster of maps that just is more fun to play, more competitive, more balanced. Fair enough. Absolutely.
So shall we maybe quickly look over this thing? Okay, so I did mention like so season one and two are as we as we know them. Two two operators each season. Uh, Oregon and House rework. The House rework. I don't know. There was a lot of cheering from the from the audience. Um, I didn't actually. It was hard to tell like if there's actually anything changing gameplay wise. And I think they specifically mentioned that this is it's a casual rework. Like House is never going to be a pro league competitive map it's always going to be somewhere somewhere you go for fun so i think it's probably going to be better and more balanced than it is right now but i'm not expecting it to be like pro, pro league ready not immediately or so certainly maybe not even ever but that doesn't matter but as for did it look a lot different i mean they changed the look of the of the of the of the, of the a tree house and they changed the um the construction room into an actual bedroom Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. So that's that's interesting. We won the round. I got a kill. And that was quite good. And I didn't record it. How about I record this one? Which one do I prefer in general? New maps or map reworks? <sighs> hmm. I mean, in, in a way, a reworked map is kind of a new map like if you look at the way they've been reworking the maps like when they say they're reworking a map they are reworking it like you look at uh, look at new canal there's nothing left it's like it's that's a new map altogether if you look at a new theme park that's a new map like it's a new map with the old name and the old um and the old theme i guess so like, I, to me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference whether they call it a new map or whether it's a new map with an old name and some similarities sometimes. Like, it depends on how much, but, um, like, there's, there's different, uh, yeah, different levels of rework. But usually, like, in, in recent times, new map has meant new map and there's, like, not a lot left. So, yeah, to me, it doesn't make that much of a difference. And I think, like, if you're, if you're going to bring out a new map... And there's a there's a there's an old map that is just bad. Then it's worth getting rid of that as well. So yeah, I don't mind the fact that they're kind of taking some maps out of the rotation. Will I ever be on the Logic Bomb Logic Bomb podcast? Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. I mean, it it is what it is. I can't I can't change it. Uh, probably not is the answer. Uh, there's a good reason. There's a good reason why we're not doing that anymore. Why am I not on the Logic Bomb podcast? <laughs> like we've we've kind of chosen not to talk about it too much, as you can probably tell by now, because otherwise we we would have. Um, so yeah, it's it, it is what it is. That's what I can say. Do you think you'd ever do a video on fall damage? It feels like you can fall from 6 meters and take 3 HP and fall 7 meters and die lol. Yeah, um, the, 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 the drop off is really, really sudden, I'm gonna say. And I have, I tested it once like a little bit and there's like, you can fall one story in most maps and it won't do anything. And then you fall a little bit further and it starts to damage you. But then you literally go a few inches more and you're dead. Like there is, there's very little uh, in between and I think really, like the the design on most maps is, if it's if it's more than one story, you die, and if it's just the one story, you take no damage. And I guess that's that's the idea, and that makes sense. What do you think if Rainbow Six Siege ever had a three v three mode, and give Defender extra reinforcements? Ooh, ooh. Interesting question. It's not something I've ever considered. Like I think when they when they were designing Siege, they looked at existing games, and I think um, I think CS:GO obviously was uh, an influence there. Not sure like other games like um, what about League of Legends and stuff like that? Do they what? Do they normally have four players? I'm not quite sure even. So uh, the thing is, does does Siege need? A different number of players. I I don't think it does, and I think they're they're better off ensuring that the the current mode is is the best it can be before they start thinking about um, changing the game for new game modes or or, or adding. So uh, I don't think the game needs it to be honest. 
uh, Apex, yeah. Oh, you're talking about the pinging system in Sieged. I think I think it could use it. Yeah, I think what the, one thing of the, one of the things they did really well in Apex was. Oh my goodness. Do you think that the guns should have faster ADS times with iron sights or something like that? Uh, it seems like now zero incentive to use them. There's never really been any incentive to use the iron sights. Like, the iron sights have, have always been just 100% inferior. Um, I think, I suppose maybe in the past you had... Um, you had the, the balance wherein you had to still buy gun attachments. So gun attachments cost, uh, they cost Renown. You had to unlock them with Renown. So that meant when you got an operator for the first time, or when you got the game brand new and you just had the base operators, you had to grind out Renown to put into the guns and then upgrade your weapons. And then gun sights, they weren't a choice, they were an upgrade. So the iron sights were, they weren't good and they weren't meant to be good. And what you then had to do was basically invest uh, in the upgrade. So it made sense back then that iron sights were just inferior. They were just bad. Does it make sense now? No, it doesn't. Nowadays, um, when you just have all of the attachments already unlocked, it makes no sense to, to have the iron sights and have them be so bad and have them be the worst. It's, yeah... Should there be an incentive for, to, for iron sights? Yeah, I think you're actually, that's probably a good idea. Um, it would make sense if you gave iron sights something, like faster ADS or something, to make them more useful. I would support that. Yeah, I'm, I've actually been thinking about uh, making another video on suppressors. What's up guys, Rogue9 here. Quite a few people <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> Should the German language simplify structures? That's a big, big thing. Um... I think it would make sense, like, there's no value in having nouns have genders, I think. There's no value to it, and there's no there's no rules, there's no rhyme or reason. It's not as if, like, um, there is there's a way that you can know. The only way you can know, like, the only way you know um, which, which gender a noun is, is by knowing. That's it. So, so, yeah. Should it be simplified? I think it makes sense, but I think there's also... It would be tough. Like, when you have an entire nation of people, and actually several nations of people that speak a language, it's really hard to change a language. Like, when I was in school, they changed part of the spelling, um, and even that didn't stick. Even though they simplified the spelling, it just... Yeah, it's... Um, I think they actually may have reverted it or partially reverted it. So that just shows that changing a language is it's a it's not an easy thing to do. So should they maybe um can they? I don't know. Tough maybe. Could I say something in German? I could. <laughs> Kick out the Minecraft kids. <laughs> uh could I say one sentence in German so you can hear my wonderful voice with it? Ja, klar gerne. Wir können auch mal Deutsch reden, aber nicht für lange. Also mal ganz, ganz kurz. Ähm, was kann ich, was kann ich erzählen? Ich könnte eigentlich auf Deutsch weiter streamen. Wie wär's damit? Aber nee, äh, nur zur Demonstration von mir aus. Aber ja, so klinge ich, wenn ich Deutsch spreche. Kann man sich's vorstellen? If there were any operator reworks instead of new ops, which ops would you most want to see? 
Uh, hmm, I think... Mm, oh, I'm going to end up with the iron sights. I think Fuse... Fuse is in such an odd place because he's... Because he has a really good gadget. And I mean, we saw him played at the SI already, so it's, yeah, it's interesting. But I think there is... Yeah, they can do more to make him useful. So yeah, probably him... I mean, obviously... Tachanka is a, a meme operator, but maybe they could change him to a point where he's, he's good and useful. Ridiculous! Tash Media Game Clips, thank you so much for the super chat. Just want to show my support for the awesome channel. Been watching since the days when you compared the lengths of real animals. That is really a throwback to a long, long time back. That was, that was my sort of my first proper analytical video. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that was my Cavera video. I don't even know uh, my Cavera video from way back when. And yeah, like I said, I, I don't even know what specifically I was thinking. Just, just thought, hey, you know what? Uh, why don't I, why don't I try to explain sort of the the, the these distances? And I went for the animal lengths. Damage against all armor types. Okay, yeah, really useful for every weapon at min and max range. Yeah, that's 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 very useful to have. You think they should fix bullet holes? They could, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a dumb mechanic and it shouldn't be in the game like that. Because it doesn't work like that in real life anyway, right? Because your, your the barrel of your gun and the sights are at different heights. The bullets don't come out of your eyeballs. You can't look through a hole and aim and be able to shoot straight through. That's not how it would work. Uh, and yeah, fully agree. It's stupid. A dumb mechanic. And they should do something about it. And in fact, it's I don't think it would be too difficult because there's already a mechanic in the game where um, bullet holes... Where, where if you shoot a bullet, you basically get like a decal, but you can't actually see through. So maybe that's what they need to do. Maybe bullet holes shouldn't make actual holes, but should just like have, have like uh, just painted on stuff like that. And... Once you have that and use that, that's then when you uh, you can basically shoot the wall and you can see that you've hit it, but it's not until it's not until you've shot it multiple times that um, that the hole actually opens, and then you have a big hole that you can't use for cheesy angles. How about that? How, does th how would that work? That would wouldn't that be good? To me, that sounds good. Ah, okay. Um, what do I think about the randomized recoil? I think it's fine. Like, you, uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was a time when they tried to introduce fixed recoil, like in, in CSGO. And people hated it. Like, they hated it, like a lot. Multiplayer FPS that I played a lot of. Serge Media, thank you so much for the super chat. Do you think Glass should be able to break studs? I know they don't want him to be an entry fragger, but he also seems less useful than most ops. I think... Oh, actually, we'll pause this here. I think you're actually... Um, you're making a very valid uh, argument there. I think Glaz... Glaz kind of went through this arc of where, for a moment, he became... He was... Back in the day, when Glaz was launched, he was basically just... His gadget was the flip-up sight. It didn't have banana vision, it was just a magnified sight that you could flip up and flip down. And when you compare that to all of the op other operators and the things they bring to the game, a flip up sight was garbage, it was dumb, it was silly, like it was so pointless. So they then added the banana vision and all of a sudden you've got someone who's really really powerful. Back when he could move and see through smoke, 
that was meta defining. We went into this part, especially in high level gameplay and pro league, where it was just the smoke glass ying meta. Just put smoke down, have glass in behind, throw some ying candelas, plant. And no one could do anything. No one could dare peek that. So he became too powerful, he became meta-defining, and then they nerfed him, and they nerfed him so much that he became useless, and now they're kind of rebuffing him again. So he is a, a challenging operator. Uh, I think allowing him to get through walls with his powerful rifle, especially if Tachanka can do that as well, I think that's not a bad thing. And I think maybe having that option for Kali as well, because Kali is underwhelming, and I think she's going to be underwhelming even when she makes it into Pro League. So... I think it's it's worth thinking about that for some weapons, for some high-powered weapons. So yeah, I uh, I I think that's a, it's an interesting idea, and I think depending on his sort of stats, and I think they're still pretty bad. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I'd have to double check, but I don't think he's doing all too well right now in terms of his pick rate and his performance. It might be something just to to add a little bit to him. So yeah, uh, all in all, I would say interesting idea.